and welcome to the Big Apple School podcast, the weekly English show where we speak about everything under the sun. The major goal of the show is to help you improve your English and, of course, learn something new. My name's Katja, I'm your host, and today with me, Barbara, Kailana, Carol, do do do, again, a party, a party of four. I love it. I love it when there are four people, you know. So, and what about you, dear listeners, by the way? Do you like it when there are four people? Because, you know, you haven't said anything about it. And we, re we really want to know what you think about this new format. And in general, what do you think about our show? Remember that you can always subscribe to our pages on Apple, Yandex, Google, VK, or any other platform where you listen to our podcast. And let us know what you think. You can write about things you like. You can write about things you don't like. You can su suggest some changes, leave comments, ask questions, and even send your ideas about our next episodes. It won't take much time or effort, but it will help us a lot to become even better. Is that so? I, d I don't need to be a psychic or a fortune teller to say that this will really help us, dear listeners. So, and what about you, ladies? Do you believe that it's possible to predict the future? Of course it is. Let's, let's talk about the... <laughs> all the mystical, magical things today. That is so funny. I thought this podcast was about makeup. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I mean, we can definitely do that a, a, a bit later, you know. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit okay, different so things. I, I'm a dreamer. And so I will have um, literal dreams when I used to drive in the United States. Of course, I drove for like 40 years. I had a car. Now, of course, I don't. But um, the last, I mean, 15 years or so, um, when I had my car, I would dream about my car not working. And it would be literal. I would like, oh, no, my car's going to oh freak out. So um, I would take it in for just a, like a pre pre Uh, a proactive action. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe something's wrong, maybe it's not. Uh, but every single time, it would be the battery, it'd be something. Oh, and wow. so, but I have this last little piece that really, my last dream was when I was packing up before I came to Russia. I was packing up, everything was ready, and I had the last thing was to sell my car. And I had a dream that I was coming up the long driveway that I had going kind of like put, 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 put. I thought, oh no, my car's going to break down before I sell it. And I was just waiting for it to break down. Oh, so anyway, I was going to sell it in the next few days. And I was being really cheap. Mm -hmm. And I only would put in $5 worth of gas every time. I didn't want to fill it up and, and hand it over filled, <laughs> a filled tank. <laughs> so really, the last time I drove it, here it was on empty. And it did literally go put, 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 put up Aww. the driveway. So my dreams about my car would always come true. Wait, there is a, there is a certain name, right, for, for such dreams when they come true. Like, what is it, like recurring dreams? Is that so? Recurring would mean that it would be the same dream the same every dream time. same dream over and over again. Hmm, because I'm pretty sure there is like a specific word for it when what you see comes true or what you feel in oh, your dream. Oh, prophetic, I guess. Prophet prophetic. Puff. 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 Prophetic. 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 Yeah. Oh, like a prophecy. Yeah. yeah. Prophetic. Yeah. Oh, so you 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 have those? Yes. Now I don't have a car, so I don't have those dreams. <laughs> It's interesting that they were only about your car. Always, because that was the most important thing. Like, what's more important now to all of us? Our computer so we could do online teaching but when you're commuting it is your car you know it's funny um because i sometimes have dreams about driving a car and the thing is that i'm not a driver i don't i have no idea how to drive literally i've been at the wheel one single time in my life but i still have very often like i think like once a month a dream when i'm driving and i'm crashing and all the time i'm thinking oh god that's not my car what am i gonna say oh, no. what am i gonna do okay so What's i've read about dreams that? and the car can represent your body so it could mean your health oh wow yes. yes do you remember what happened after that after you saw that dream of uh, course not because i i never bad. i never thought you know to think about it <laughs> Oh, wow. I have never thought, I have never heard about this theory. Oh, now yeah. when I have this dream, like I'm like dream telling, tell, telling dreams. You see something uh, in your dream and it means something according to the, uh, I don't know, the books, uh, the uh, previous seers, whatever we can call them, right? And uh, some things uh, re really uh, from one to another. Uh, dream telling uh, book, let us call that. It can uh, also be online. Huh? 
online there's uh, some websites that can interpret yes, dreams yes yes I, 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 I call them just in brackets the books uh, because <laughs> I, I can't okay. uh, find the best definition to them so uh, you can see from one to another it can uh, have the similar or maybe a little different uh, interpretations Tell, uh, interpretations right and that's so exciting just to I don't know, to investigate it all and to find something that is uh, or can be uh, pretty much about you and then just to try to see if it really happened or not. It's just I remember so from being like, you know, a little child, every time I saw, uh, you know, like cockroaches in my dreams, my mom used to tell me all the time, like, If you see cockroaches, that's for money. You know, that right. means you're going to have money. So it's a good thing to see cockroaches in your dreams. Seeing rats, for example, it's uh, something that uh, somebody uh, around you is going to uh, set you up or betray you, something like that. Or And then if you be... see like something with your teeth, uh-huh. like teeth falling out, that would mean you have you're going to have like problems with health. Mm-hmm. Oh, I have dreams like that all the time. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've I've It's heard that um, <laughs> dreams about teeth would have something to do with someone lying. Either you're lying or someone around you is lying. Oh, my, my yeah. dreams usually like my teeth start breaking and uh, and uh, and the more I try to spit it out, the more I feel like. <gasps> pieces of my horrible. teeth inside my horrible dream. It, yeah it's horrible and i still don't understand what it means um, i've also read that if you dream about a lot of cats it's about troubles so if you have a lot of problems these are your But cats, cats are good yeah if you have a colony of cats does it really mean that <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's supposed to be nice oh okay <laughs> i've had a different experience with dreams and it's I mean, you would think it would be a prediction, but if you forget about it and only remember when it happens, I guess it's not a prediction, right? It was more like a deja vu feeling. Uh, oh yeah, that also happens. It's not as such connected with the fortune telling on the mm-hmm. future, but it is an unex- you know inexplicable. Do you know any uh, scientific explanation to deja vus? Do you? I used I, to know. I, I read mean, about it. I but don't. <laughs> I don't. I'm so curious I. right now. It has to come from the subconscious, right? Because the subconscious is just crazy. It's wild. It can think about all sorts of things. We're supposed to be using our rational mind when we um, navigate our day. Is it possible, though, to only use the rational mind? Uh, no, it's not. Because <laughs> the subconscious has a, a mind of its own. But yeah, deja vu is so weird. You know, you're like, I wait, I remember this conversation happening already. What is going on here? I remember is myself doing that already. In the Matrix? So, right. <laughs> to Matrix, me, it would be more yeah. like uh, something would happen. It's like, I just dreamt about this last night. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah, that, it would be more like that. Yeah. <laughs> so and w- what about predicting the future? Do you do you believe that it's possible to somehow find out what is going to happen? Mm. If talking about that... Uh, All right, more uh, rational and scientific way. I think uh, it's more like seeing the ways uh, that uh, our uh, future can develop uh, mm-hmm. in them, right? And uh, if we talk about that in that magical, mysterious way, I think, oh, of course, everything is possible and everything is so uh, interesting and exciting. Um, and uh, that's why I prefer to believe that you can of course tell the few uh, foretell the future and um, actually the ways uh, you can do it uh, they are pretty much really interesting mm-hmm. like, have you ever tried to somehow sure. predict the future to tell of the course. fortune the I cards are uh, like usual cards you know, the usual deck and uh, tarot uh, and uh, I think uh, dream telling yeah mm-hmm. uh, and I'm not sure. Maybe some uh, Christmas tide or uh, what are they? You, you personally tried all those? Uh, like to- either me uh, personally or somebody tried. Uh, somebody helped me, right? Mm-hmm. So cool. uh, there are uh, 
masters, I, I can say about if we talk about tarot, right? Uh, so, of course, there are uh, girls uh, or maybe uh, some other people. Who, uh, okay, if we talk about my uh, circle, right? Uh, mm-hmm. So there are girls who can do that or who can uh, know uh, what do the cards in the deck mean, yeah? And uh, the combinations of uh, those cards. And that's interesting, and um, I can't say that it uh, definitely uh, predicts your future or mm-hmm. something, but it's right when you are in trouble, when you need to make a decision. So probably that's one of the ways that can help you to see something from, okay, all right, from another side. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. not only you, your family, your relatives, or uh, maybe some. Uh, knowing people that you, for example, read, but also uh, just... I I think when we have some kind of a decision to make, you know, and we are in between minds, we always want to, you know, to have a sign, to have fate tell us something. Like, come on, help me, help me make a decision. Oh, you've mentioned tarot. Why why don't we talk about this first? So have you ever had your, you know, the tarot read for you? I think they read tarot. Yeah, I was brought up with these kinds of things. Uh, my grandmother um, actually did the Ouija board and my aunt oh. did the Ouija board. And, and she always talked about spirits from the other side. My mother would go to um, tarot card readers. And so um, my, the first time I went was when I was 13. And then when, when you're talking about when we have a decision to make, if you have your own set, and I had a really good book as well to interpret it, you can get addicted to it. So I've had several Mm. uh, times in my life where I'd get a set of tarot cards, I'd get a good book, I'd interpret it, and then would would read like three times a day, you know, just crazy. So I'd have to get rid of it. I'd throw it out. And then, you know, a decade later, I will get another set of something. Oh, wow. Carol, what about you? Have you ever had tarot read? Uh, Not me, personally. Uh, Not exactly. I know my family, my aunts have, but uh, in my case... When I was in the United States, uh, I was with this religious community and they had this church in North Carolina uh, where they would do some kind of reading, but uh, they would say that uh, they were hearing from God. So they would provide words of wisdom or words of knowledge. But it's very similar to, you know, doing a consultation with a person who reads cards or things like that. Because I would, you know, like tarot is something more or less... Mythical, maybe. So to mm-hmm. me, I would never, you know, connect it with religion as such because it's something so different. Well, at least yeah, it's in, connected in, to the other side. If you yeah, believe in but, spirits on the other side, not necessarily God, I guess. Mm-hmm. But I think tarot card readers um, nowadays do um, advertise or they they say that they are connected to this uh, universal source or this source of love or this goodness. Mm-hmm. They're in this positive uh, way of reading. Yeah. I remember I had uh, Tara read when um, I went to my friend's place and her roommate, you know, had a tarot deck. And she's like, do you want me to read your tarot? I'm like, well, why not? And you know how they say about your past, present and future. And I have realized, you know, that whatever card you have, you know, whatever description it has, whatever kind of events it describes, you're always able to interpret it your own way, to connect it with some things. Because if I tell you, I don't know. In your, this card says that in your past, you had some challenges that were difficult to go through. You would immediately think of some kind of events because this is very general. Mm-hmm. Like, it doesn't matter what they say. We will always find a way to interpret it. All right. So There is a lot of psychology in uh, mm-hmm. the working with uh, cards, uh, in working with mm, astrology, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so seeing not only the... Uh, the meaning of uh, the signs, all right, uh, but also the reaction of the person, and uh, the person is the one who connects mm-hmm. everything. Uh, there is the interpretation of a sign, of a card, or uh, whatever, mm-hmm. and uh, you are uh, actually uh, responsible for the connection, for all those connections to see uh, them in the past or maybe in the future. So what are the ways uh, actually you are looking for? Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Well, I think in this case, your subconscious actually tells you like, okay, if you interpreted it this way about the future, maybe that's what you want to do. Maybe here's the answer to your mm-hmm. doubts. If I may play the devil's advocate here, uh, <laughs> could I suggest that uh, maybe all the forms of addiction that we use, tarot cards, um, like reading I mean, like tea leaves and things mm-hmm. like that, are all forms of the art of mentalism. Where you just learn through psychology, like uh, well, you have to have an experience other... with an actual um, person who does medium work, which mm-hmm. I've had, and you have to sit there and say nothing and give up no facts at all, and she actually says things that you are specific. So these kinds of I've, I have two actually. Before I came to Russia, I had two really good ones, and um, one um, told me that I said, oh, I'm going to um, start ice skating. He goes, no, no, don't do that. I, I really don't want you to break anything. I said, no, no, I'm just going to do you know, simple movements and just mm-hmm. beautiful arms and just do it for exercise. And, you know, well, I I came back a month later. I said, well, you were right. I came back in a cast. <gasps> I had broken my wrist ice skating. He told me not to do it. He told me, he said, I don't want you to break anything. And it was true. Mm-hmm. So wait, when you when you say about this experience, is that with the Ouija board? No, I don't do the Ouija board. But this is from for um, this is a person who deals with the medium. He's a medium, so he deals with the spirits on the mm-hmm. other side. Whoever, whatever, are they my ancestors? Are they're my guides? I don't know who they are. I don't know where he gets his information. Maybe he has mental telepathy. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know what it is. And what about your experience? Because you said that your aunt had the Ouija, the Ouija board. W- yeah. What was it like? Yeah, so- I think that was kind of low. I don't think it was really anything valuable, really. Mm-hmm. Um, but the two psychics that I have um, have told me specific things. Mm-hmm. And um, it has really helped me. I don't know, Carol, what do you think about Ouija board? Have you ever tried it yourself? No, or? never. Just saw it uh, maybe in movies mm-hmm. or whatever. So uh, it looks really exciting. And I think it uh, has pretty mm, okay uh, parallels with our uh, Christmas tide, uh, mm-hmm. whatever it is, divination what, uh, or something. Uh, I mean, uh, so we have a set of different ways to predict future, especially after Christmas for 12 or 14 days uh, special for 12 days yeah I yeah? think I think in, in the uh, um, well in our orthodox calendar it uh-huh. would be from the 31st of December no, no, till no, no, from the 7th till the 19th of January so long oh right, okay the 12 days uh, so the 7th not the 6th because technically 6th is the Christmas Eve and Okay, I don't know. So, okay, so right. somewhere around Christmas time, yeah. which is 7th of January here in Russia. So, okay, and it's Christmas and, tide. Uh, Christmas tide, right. And uh, during that time, uh, the people, especially girls, so they want to see the future, they want to see their uh, husbands to be, uh, especially, yeah, yeah. right. And there is a, a massive tradition. Uh, at least it used to be in uh, Russia mm-hmm. uh, before the Soviet Union. And sometimes now uh, young girls, uh, they uh, try uh, to predict something, to foresee something. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, either it's dropping the wax uh, or onto the surface. Oh, yeah, yeah. Of the, we have that in uh, Brazil, but not for Christmas. It's yeah? for... Um, the date of a saint in June, mm-hmm. uh, Saint Antonio, if I'm not mistaken, and yeah. because he's the saint of relationships. And uh, oh, so, so you also put like hot wax into cold water yeah, to, to see, see what world. shapes it takes. Right. Yes, exactly. And uh, there is one more thing. Uh, I don't know. You mm, maybe wrap or uh, the okay some piece of paper and uh, burn it, and the shape or uh, that. Uh, you can see, like, turning the mm-hmm. the dish where it is. I think you look at the shadow, right? Yeah, yeah. You look at the shadow and the shapes that you can see maybe can tell you something. It's so exciting, especially mm-hmm. for young uh, children, yes. yeah, to do. 
uh, I don't know. So that's why I can see some parallel with that uh, Ouija board, right? Uh, it's, I don't know, it's magic, yeah? Yeah, or, or someone pushing right. it, right? right. <laughs> Actually, we, my, my sister and I, we tried this Ouija board several times. Right. Nothing happened. Nothing ever happened. Oh. That's because you're being honest. You need someone in there to <laughs> push it, actually. <laughs> to make you believe. But yeah, thank you for mentioning Christmas tide because there is a huge culture of fortune telling in Russia during, you know, around Christmas time. So this pouring the hot wax, then on not only Christmas time, but New Year's Eve as well, you know, it's said to be mm-hmm. a very magical time. So when um, girls used to, you know, go outside, the first person they saw, they would ask the name, you know, like, and whatever the name was would be the name of the des- somebody destined for them. Right, uh, or maybe are, they uh, first born, something like that. Yeah, there they, are uh, so many different ways. Mm-hmm. And I remember my mom told me like, oh, I was once fortune telling, how did that go? She was like, well... You know, I don't remember how exactly she did that. And she said that the name of my future husband was Gena. And I said, that's a horrible, I would never marry a guy whose name is Gena. Guess what my father's name is. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I was like, are you serious? <laughs> so, yeah. And I think there's also this way, you know, uh, I don't know if it's fortune telling or superstition. We Russians are very superstitious. So, but when you sleep on a new place, oh, like right. in a new home, yes. you have to say, you know, like phrase, something like, oh, you who's destiny for me, come to me in my dream. And then whoever you see in your dream is the one who's destiny for you. Or uh, put a comb uh, under the pillow, right? Oh, yeah, and, right. And say something like, oh, my destiny, come and... Uh, Brush my hair. Brush my hair, right. Comb my hair. Something like that. (laughs) That would scare me so much. There are some scary things, you know, like some scary ways of fortune telling when they say you have to go on a dark, you know, like um, Christmas Eve into the banya, which is usually a separate, you know, building at night with no one else, sit in front of a mirror, burn a candle. Like, oh, Thank you very much. I'm good. I think I'm good. That sounds really scary. Like, what? Because kind of dangerous too with the fire, right? In a barn or someplace? Uh, no, no. Uh, it's not a barn. It's banya. It's like a so sauna. Uh huh. But, but isn't yeah. it made out of wood? It is. But it's but quite I mean, you, usually wet inside. Uh, yeah. But still, rem- like, imagine you're sitting in a dark <laughs> building. You have a mirror and a candle. So, and you know how this usually creates this... Um, Energy or this... Y- yeah, and also it's kind of creepy. You know, I would be scared and to death. How about uh, making a, a corridor of uh, that mirror of corridor? Mirrors. Oh, yeah. yeah. When, when you, you make s- uh, that corridor, you put one mirror in front of you and the second one behind oh, you and creepy. burn two candles uh, on the sides. <laughs> That's so creepy. Even at home, uh, when it is dark, you, when you make it, of course, you can see something there, uh, I don't know, approaching you. <laughs> okay, so all of this is negative. It sounds very negative energy. <laughs> I don't deal with yeah. that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I don't when you're talking to. about God or something good, some kind of good energy. <laughs> well, there is one way. Well, I this has worked for me for like eight years now. So and I think I've mentioned it in one of the episodes as well. So but uh, and it's, it's been like a tradition in my family for years and years and years. So on New Year's night, so, you know, from 31st of December till the 1st of January, when you go to sleep, uh, what we do is we write, uh, 12 different wishes on 12 different pieces of paper. Then when you go to sleep, you put all of them under the pillow. And the first thing you do when you wake up is take out, you know, three of them randomly. Usually the first thing that you, the first wish that you take is, you know, will come true. The second one is like 50-50. The third one, well, unlikely. And, you know, at first I was skeptical, but it's been eight years now. And the first wish has always come true for me. And I'm like, I don't know if that, you know, brings me motivation or if it's just a coincidence. But I prefer to believe that it's not just a coincidence. So, yeah, try it. One of my friends and I, we have a tradition on that Christmas tide. Um, we meet uh, for coffee, for example, and uh, we do pretty much the same thing. We write some wishes to each other and to ourselves, and we put them into, into a hat, for example, right? And we uh, take out three. They can be uh, written by myself or by my friend, whatever. And uh, so we take out three uh, wishes, 
And uh, after that, uh, hmm, kind of, we wait and see what's gonna happen. And a few things really uh, came true. She had a baby, as Aww. she dreamt it was a trouble for her, and uh, she couldn't. And uh, now she has a little boy, and she's happy. And uh, I think one of the things was uh, that I got an interesting... Uh, job, yeah, that was a uh, change in absolute huge change in my life. I became a teacher and then a, a school director, so that was uh, one of the things. And I don't know, oh, either to believe it or not, like it's a, uh, like you were saying before, these are very yes, general things, right? But it is yeah. so, I don't it's know, still it's nice, <laughs> so pleasant yeah. to think, it right? It gives hope, you yeah, know, to does. believe in these need. miracles, it's a right. yeah. <laughs> I have a question to Carol. So you've said that you do the same with the, you know, with the wax and everything, but in June. So is there a culture of fortune telling in Brazil then? So how widespread is it? Uh, definitely. Uh, there is a religion in Brazil that came from Africa uh, when the African slaves were brought to Brazil. And uh, the name of the religion is Candomblé. And uh, they have the god that they worship Oshun and the guardian angels, what they call guardian angels, the Orishas. So the priest of this religion will often do some readings with the, with a type of shell mm -hmm. from the sea called, in Portuguese they call it Buzius. So they would, uh, they prepare a whole setup, you know, and then they throw these uh, shells to see what, where they fall and mm -hmm. then they do some readings about Uh, oh, it could wow. be things that you need for now, for the present or the future. Mm -hmm. It reminded me about uh, actually those uh, stones, uh, runic stones uh, that are... The runes. The runes, yeah. right. Uh, that some uh, in Scandinavic, I think... The Vikings. Uh, uh, the Vikings, <laughs> right. Uh, in oh. Scandinavic uh, traditions, so they had... Uh, Mm, let it be a little bag of those runes uh, and uh, they used to throw them to see uh, the, maybe the answers. Uh, yes. Right? Yeah, so yeah. these are so little uh, clay tablets or little little cubes mm -hmm. or little um, stones and it, each one would have a certain uh, symbol, mm -hmm. which is their alphabet. What right. they, mm -hmm. yeah, looks very foreign to us. But each one has. But a lot of um, this information with the runes has been lost. Mm -hmm. And so if you're going to do the runes, you have to kind of like develop your own kind of mm. uh, method with it. Yeah, but they come in a little bag and you kind of yeah. shake them and see how they fall. You know, it's interesting to see some similarities between different cultures, maybe. Mm -hmm. Even, you know, so far far away from each other that's so great so the one so i told you that i have two really good psychics um, in the states um the one who told me about the ice skating accident i would go see him and he would give me a scarf and i had to hold on to let's see i one end i can't remember which end i think the two hands the two hands and then he would hold on to one part of the the scarf and for some reason there was this energy through the scarf um but another one um decided to go she could go online you could get your reading done online and as long as you're connected to the spirits of the afterworld you could uh, somehow i don't trust online that much <laughs> you know in in general that sounds But energy is infinite. It can be anywhere. It knows no borders yes, and distance and time. Right. Yes, exactly. Past, present, future, uh, cyberspace. But still, it's uh, like with uh, teaching online, offline, yeah? So it's different uh, energy, right? P working with a person uh, face to face, uh, even for you as a person who is a client for example yeah it can be different you can feel it much uh, more uh, much greater right uh, way and uh, of course you can uh, i don't know see uh, less how personal. the person if if online less personal less uh, magic yes, i yes, guess less magic <laughs> yeah less yeah magic. and i disagree because um i can hear better with um a headset And so I can hear and kind of feel their voice. Uh -huh. and so I'm, it's very intimate. It's, we're like face to face right there. And um, it's not like you can uh, deter your eyes or avert your eyes. or. Mm -hmm. 
So wait, um, Alona Carol, have you had any experience with a psychic? Mm, I don't think so. Uh, just only the cards and uh, the Christmas tide. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, not really. Uh, I know definitely my family has, they used to consult with uh, psychics. I, uh, in Brazil, there is this other uh, sort of philosophy slash religion, uh, spirituality, like spiritualism, and they have mediums and uh, some people consult with them. And I, there are definitely family, family members of mine who have consulted with them. Mm -hmm. And they definitely have some pretty interesting stories about things that were predicted. Ooh, to them. Can, can you share something? Um, unfortunately, it's a sad one, but the, one of them has to do with my father's passing. Uh, apparently, my aunt had consulted with a card reader. Uh, well, not really a psychic, but a card reader. And uh, uh, she alerted um, my aunt about it. And it, it did happen. It did come to happen. Um, but other things were more like confirmations of like, uh, something's wrong with me, like, uh, cousins of mine, um, he was sick with something and, uh, they consulted with some mediums and, mm -hmm. uh, they were able to pinpoint why he was, uh, feeling the way that he was and oh, wow. they, he went with, to some sessions with them, I guess some kind of prayer that they do. I, I don't exactly know what how it works but um, he, he got better so actually you reminded me i once was at a healer uh, if we can call that person uh, so the person who uh, can be uh, what's that manualist right uh yeah. the therapist yeah, yeah manual manual therapy uh, manual like a therapist. chiropractor uh, yeah yeah and uh oh, the other thing is uh that he I'm not sure. He uh, he was claimed to be a kind of a psychic or something mm -hmm. like, uh, like a I don't healer, know. right? A healer, right? Looking into your eyes, or I don't know, or touching your uh, ears or something. He was like, ah, that's wrong. I had yeah. a, uh, now I remember uh, here in Russia. I went to Altai, mm -hmm. and uh, there was a lady there who was part of the group that was going um, up to the campsite. And uh, she mentioned something, like, she looked at me and she mentioned something about my pancreas. Um, and I was like, okay. I mean, I didn't take it seriously, but uh, it turns out a few months later, uh, when I went to a doctor, I did have some problems with my pancreas. <laughs> I oh, had wow. to take some I'd medication. I would be so and offended if someone was talking about my pancreas. <laughs> That's yes, very right. That private. Yes, it's exactly. Private. I was like, what? <laughs> so, uh, of Especially course coming out of nowhere. Yes, yeah. so really. <laughs> I'd be so offended. <laughs> yes, but, you know. But turns out she was right. <laughs> So helpful, helpful yeah, piece helpful. of advice. Yeah. <laughs> very so, weird one, but still. Yes. The other psychic of whom is very, very wonderful. Um, she told me so many things about my father and my mother because they're both on the other side. And I did not say anything. I did not give up any facts, any impressions, opinions, nothing. Mm -hmm. And she would, she would just describe my mother to a T and my father. And it was really helpful. Because once they pass, you can't say certain things. Mm -hmm. And so it really brought a connection. Aww. Yeah, there are so many things we cannot explain, you know, about how they work. But we just have to accept it. And that's it. Like, how could, how could this lady know about the pancreas? Yes. <laughs> Maybe, of course, it's something like a deduction based on the <laughs> right. slight change of shade in your, uh, let's say, skin or, or the color gait. of your pupils yes. <laughs> i do not know but still it's but still i believe <clears throat> i believe that people uh, really have some powers yeah uh, it can be uh, either some mental thing or mm -hmm. maybe uh, some uh, things uh, connected to energy or whatever but still uh <laughs> and i think that most uh, people like this they either don't uh I don't know, they don't make it a big deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or uh, they uh, work with people a lot and they become uh, not popular, but uh, quite well known. And uh, people uh, consult them and they just uh, 
tend to come uh, and that uh, word of mouth works yeah mm -hmm. and uh, so uh, if the person really does something uh, something good and they can predict or see something uh, so uh, in that case it's not like uh, advertisement or popular uh, popularity or well, it's the most popular type of ad, ad actually the right. word of mouth mm -hmm. right it's so you're talking about people who are special but what about our own intuition i mean we all have this gut feeling we all know right i've i i just know that i can make certain decisions because i just know it and sometimes and yeah think, no i think this is this is something that can't be explained rationally it's just something we have to Except, you know, people with some of the maybe powers or something like that, they can't explain how they do that. But if they can, they can. Who cares? Yes. Maybe there is no, you know, rational explanation to that. Maybe there shouldn't be. Yeah, I guess um, during the day we do, not during the day, but um, on, on a daily basis. Well, you know, over the week, let's see. Uh, we make a tiny, t uh, lots of tiny predictions about many things. We just don't seem to trust it enough or trust our gut enough to to really con taking them into real consideration until it happens, right? Mm -hmm. But I, I do believe that uh, we all have uh, this little gift inside of us. Mm -hmm. We just need to explore more. Yeah, maybe. So we've talked about this culture of fortune telling in Russia. We've talked about culture of fortune telling in Brazil. What about the US? Barbara, would you say that there is some certain culture of fortune telling that a lot of people are into it? Interesting. I guess in this is what I've described already, the mediums, um, some um, bookstores will have psychics there. So there's one in Atlanta called the Phoenix and the Dragon. And, and this is quite common. A certain kind of metaphysical bookstore will have readers. Oh, wow. And you'll have a whole list of them. I have never heard about that. It'll be a, a bookstore where you'll have books of these different kinds of religions or these different kinds of predictions. And then maybe uh, certain stones, certain mm -hmm. tarot cards where they're, they're selling all these kind of tools. And then they'll have the readers. Yeah. I, I'm not sure about, let's say maybe well not psych well maybe psychics and mediums but i have noticed that tarot reading has become really widespread because i you know uh when i'm in boston for example even at wellesley i sometimes see these little ads like tarot reading tarot reading so and i think wow so, so there are more and more people who start to do that there seems to be um, a consensus among these mediums um of, of what i've described um, it's that if you see a red hand in the window advertising for palmistry or something, oh, that's yeah, just right. kind of like a, a lower energy kind of fake. You're, you have to be very uh, wary of, mm. of these red palms or the Ouija board or these little kind of things. Because there are really people who can really somehow But they connect. don't need to advertise themselves because people know... I guess by the word of mouth or something like that. I I've just thought about um, about Nola. Have you ever been to Nola? Because I heard that you know wherever you go in, in New Orleans, there are psychics. Oh, New Orleans, and, right? Yeah, New Orleans. Oh, that's how I say it, New Orleans. And you said New Orleans. It was like Nola. You like said like Nola. New, New Orleans. Oh, is that New New Orleans? Well, some I've people say said like uh, New Orleans. New right. Orleans. Some I say I New usually, Orleans. I usually hear people saying <clears throat> Nola. Yeah, I've never heard of NOLA. Oh, yeah, <laughs> but you mean NOLA? I might hear it too. New <laughs> Orleans. Is that what you're New talking? Orleans, yeah. Mm -hmm. yes, but right. now people just say like, and oh. it's written like NOLA, N-O-L-A. Probably because nobody knows how to pronounce it. So we now just say NOLA. It's very convenient. Okay, but just like <laughs> saying LA for Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah. LA, NOLA. Okay. NOLA. Have you ever been there? Yes. So what do, what would you say about the psychic side? Because I, as far as I get, there are so many palm readers, tarot readers, psychics oh, over probably there. Probably so like for entertainment and a lot of people coming. Um, but I don't know because I was just at the bus station, so I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> So, because, you know, I saw uh, all these videos and pictures from there, but it kind of makes me, you know, question it. Yeah, I would. Are these just That's for great. entertainment, yeah. for like tourism, to create the atmosphere of the city as, you know, being so mystical, you know, full of different stories and legends and myths? Oh, it's kind of a mecca for all the palm readers and tarot 
Yeah, they say it's usually a mecca for all the crazy people, but okay. (laughs) (laughs) But it's also a mecca of really mixed people as well. So there's a lot of different kinds of traditions mixing around. Wait a sec. Um, is it is it there that they have Mardi Gras? Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah, right. Which yes. Is the same as Carnival. Yeah. In, yeah. In Rio. It's the same beliefs. Uh huh. So. Exactly. I am desperately trying to remember now. Um, how do you call it? The culture of um, it's like wood voodoo. Actually, like in in Nola, there are a lot of people who practice voodoo and all that witchcraft, as they say. And then I'm trying to remember the word, like the concept, which is somehow connected with people who live on um, God. No, I can't remember. So the place where a lot of alligators are, you know, like the the swamps. So people who live on the swamps and they have their black dark magic and they say like, don't go over there. I remember all these like elements of this culture, like roosters, gators, swamps, dark magic. Isn't that voodoo? No, voodoo. But there is. Voodoo is more specifically that those dolls that you make, yeah. right? But there. I are remember other... that one of the key elements in the culture is Papa Legba. No, have have you ever heard about Papa Legba? No, no. Okay, well, this is something to look up after the podcast then. So it's like Papa Legba is the dark figure in 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 the voodoo witchcraft, as far as I understand. Some kind of a spirit that you can make a deal with, but it's going to cost you a lot. And in this case, it's not usually about the money they say, but it, you know about something else. Oh, so I, like, I, I definitely have many stories reg- uh, related to that, but from Brazil and because of my grandmother, because she used oh, to. Just, do, do stuff like that. She would um, even uh, she would she would have this what she would call prayers to lost souls. And um, basically, if you needed something, you would ask these souls, um, and uh, you have to promise something in exchange. Um, it could be that you would pray to them uh, every every day of the week in exchange for their favor or. Um, any any promise like go to the cemetery and then do something there or there are many like the promise could be anything so um one of the stories and it's kind of like more the dark side of it uh my my aunt had made such promise to one of the souls but she was not keeping her side of the promise so the souls uh, apparently started uh, haunting her in her sleep and so my grandmother tried to decide, like, okay, let me try to solve this issue. So she spent the night in my aunt's apartment and she saw in the, indeed in the middle of the night, she was being bothered by something. So she started talking to these beings and, uh, and, and she just felt something jumping on her throat. So that's the story. It's pretty dark. Uh, <laughs> Did your aunt keep her promise in the end? Uh, my grandmother made a, like a, sort of like a counter promise to like take it up on herself. Time. To, yes, yeah. negotiation These time. These are the conditions we offer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so what do you suggest? So she Ooh, she made yeah, a different promise to to kind of like take it up on herself to continue the payment to these souls. And uh, after that, it, it seems like everything was okay with my aunt. It's a very ungrateful thing, I think, yeah. to to make, <laughs> you know, a deal with something like that. Yeah. You don't want to mess up with them. All right. So, and what about, um, we've talked about Ouija board, tarot. What about astrology and all those zodiac signs? What is your outlook on that? I grew up, um, again, uh, my family really believes uh, in everything related to that. And uh, my grandmother, actually, every morning she would, uh, on the newspaper, she would read everybody's horoscope. So, <laughs> uh, uh She loved doing that. So together as a family, it was like a little event that we had uh, every day. Uh, but uh, I, that's not something that I kept doing. Uh, but I think it's really interesting. I think that uh, a lot of it is based on legit things. Um, however, I read a couple of years ago that there's a zodiac sign missing related to how the calendar is arranged. So that kind of uh, shook my beliefs about it because it's like we're not getting the whole information here, you know. Oh. So it's like, well, there's this um, <laughs> big debate here between astrologers and astronomers. Because astronomers are saying that the sky, 
the pattern of the stars are completely different from when astrology was first mapped out. Mm. And so we have a completely different sky up there, which would lead us to believe that astrology really wouldn't have any bearing on mm -hmm. the sky anymore. And that's what I, I tend to um, believe as well with the astronomers. But with astrology, it was big in the 70s. It was, mm -hmm. have you ever seen like, oh, what's your sign? Oh, mm -hmm. we don't get along. Oh, what? Oh, yeah. You know, sometimes when you say like, oh, she's very stubborn, people are like, of, of course she's stubborn. She's a Taurus or yeah, she's right, Aries. Right, right, right. Yeah, that was so big. In I think like, it's you know, getting the, big again, actually. I, I still hear a little, a lot of people talking like that today, especially when it comes to relationships and you want to find a partner. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know what? I think it has a lot to do with when we feel, feel powerless in this world that we're in, COVID and mm. all the hot spots of the wars, different conflicts around the world. And we need some kind of hope. So if we could hold on to, oh, Scorpio goes with Sagittarius or a water sign goes with this. You, could you know, it's, yeah, that's interesting because people would never, you know, when I say like, oh, I'm Aries, they're like, no, you're not. You don't look like it. Like you're not yeah. as, as stubborn and conflicty and moody. Like, well, maybe I'm an unusual Aries. Then. Oh, it's because you have Scorpio related. in the fifth house. Oh, it's oh, because Jesus. of... Yeah. Uh -huh. So maybe you would? I mean, I, th I heard that about Capricorns. I'm a Capricorn. So I, I also hear a lot that Capricorn is very stubborn. Stubborn, oh, hardworking, uh, really hardworking. Oh, and I have a lot I'll of Capricorns, <laughs> Capricorns in my family and around me. So I can say, yes. Wait, Capricorn and Aries and Taurus, they're of the same... Earth, what is it? Earth, Earth sign, sign, right? Yeah. So, oh, well, so that's, that's why, why they're a same. Oh, okay. And then so, we have, so I'm a fine. water sign. Am I a water sign? And I'm hardworking, so you can describe <laughs> me. Wait, what are the water the water signs? It's a Cancer, cancer um, I don't, Pisces, I don't know. Scorpio. What is it? Pisces, Pisces, Scorpio. What about wait? What about fire? Aries, Sagittarius. Leo, oh wait, Aries, Aries it, it is goes fire. Every, it so goes in order. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Aries, so every fourth uh, one. Leo and uh, who's that? S S S Sagittarius. Yeah. Sag okay. Of course, I used to know these things. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? You know, I used to. I used to think like, okay, I kind of remember this the zodiac signs, you know, and all this question like, oh, what zodiac sign are you? But now it's gotten, you know, further than that. I have some students and, you know, they're like in their early 20s. And they're like, what sign are you? I'm like, I'm Aries. They're like, what's your rising sign? Yeah. I'm like, excuse me? Like, well, what's your rising sign, sun sign and moon sign? I'm like, I, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? They're like, oh, you know, I could physically hear their, their eyes rolling. I think mm -hmm. you can it's, hear it. It also has something to do with, I don't mean to put it down, but it has something to do with like, um, it's something you can slip into knowing about something that doesn't really matter or you really can't <laughs> prove, but yet you you're an expert on it. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know it has about something to do thing. with that as well. But yeah, apparently, as far as I understand it, I may be wrong because I'm not an expert on all these things, but as they try to explain to me, it's like your rising sun is your zodiac sign, the one you know that depending on the day that you were born, then your moon, your sun sign, it's in what position was the sun the day that you were born? And it's different because, you know, like everything moves and then the same with the moon sign. So you can be um, Aries, rising and these are divided Taurus. by houses. So that's what I was saying in the oh, fifth yeah. house or the 12th house. Yeah. You have to oh, make God, sure which so planet was in which house. Is it like... And if the, the, if the sky, the map of the, the sky is completely different now, what what value does it have? That's that's my position. The house, the... Ah. <laughs> it's just, how is it possible to keep all of that in your head? I think it's just so much information. Well, that's, that's, you know, that's why someone wants and to feel like an expert. Yeah. yeah. I know that uh, now all those uh, astrologists uh, are using the special program to see right, that. Right. Um, is it like a na what is a natal card? Natal card. Is, is that yeah, that's the yeah. Day, day you were born based on yes, yes. that year. And then the position moment. of the sun, the yeah. moon and everything. Yeah, Yeah, the time. Second. Yeah, and it's got to be like Eastern Standard Time. Is it? Um, 
That's actually a good question. It what is, time do yeah. we have to keep in mind? Right, it does. So I went to an astrologer when I was li- living in Las Vegas, and he mapped it out. This was, of course, before computers uh-huh. and everything. And there's this big map. Well, he had to put in the information and send it away Send away for it. And I had to wait two weeks for this big map. And so I got this map with all the planets. It's like, I don't care. It, it just looks like nothing to me. Okay, and then when they show you the map, like, what does that yeah, mean? Yeah, I was like, who cares? You know, it was interesting. Uh, about four years ago when I uh, started uh, my school stuff uh, um, and... Uh, it was like the first month uh, of my uh, directing the school. Uh, we had a city birthday, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, and uh, I decided to present my school there. Yeah, I made an interesting... Was that with the Harry Potter uh, yes. photo zone? Yes. Okay. Uh, there was a Harry Potter photo zone and uh, like the... Uh, interesting things uh, doing um, we did there and so on. But uh, the thing is that the second zone uh, on the left was the astrologist, uh, the girl who was telling the um, past, future, and present. Yeah, uh, reading the zodiac sign, uh, like the nat- natal card or something like that. And uh, while we had some time, yeah, so she was like. I can read your uh, future, yeah, mm-hmm. for example. And she uh, uh, she uh, typed in uh, her program, uh, the uh, data I uh, gave her, and uh, actually started uh, talking about the things like, mm, are you a pretty uh, open person? Yeah, oh, that's interesting. Uh, you have some... Uh, things to do with languages and and you're like no shit (laughs) (laughs) i'm right here presenting my language school right and uh, she was like oh uh you kind of uh and then uh a future manager or something like that and then was like mm-hmm. Charlotte would laugh at that <laughs> yeah, yeah. a school director, like amazing okay, deduction okay. yeah something like that mm. it looked more like uh, you know uh those uh Testings for professions, yeah, uh, for mm. your future professions. It uh, looked right. more an aptitude like, test. Yes. Yeah, oh, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it looked more like that. When I was uh, pretty adult, I uh, so uh, completed that test and everything. Uh, actually, uh, the future professions were the professions I had already <laughs> tried, and so on. That like was been there, done that. Yeah. Didn't work. <laughs> yeah. right. I mean uh, that uh, astrological thing. Uh, Probably, uh, again, it is general, yeah? And uh, still uh, it works on the interpretations that the astrologist gives you and the connections that you make uh, with the things. Probably there is something uh, in that, especially if you believe. I think uh, when you... Uh, the faith is the biggest thing in all that. Yeah, the belief in something. Yes, yeah. right. Correct so, mm-hmm. me if I'm wrong. I'm really curious about something. Uh, would this astrological reading be also somehow connected to reincarnation? Because uh, if I'm not mistaken, someone after losing her dog, she decided to consult with an astrologist uh, to find out when uh, her dog would reincarnate, you know, and to try to get the dog Probably Back there somehow. are some connections, but I'm not sure or uh, what you can see. Uh, I, yeah, I think it's going to depend on the astrologer mm-hmm. who, if if the astrologer believes in reincarnation. But I think a lot of times reincarnation does come into play with a lot of these things. Reincarnation with um, tarot cards or mm-hmm. however, whatever mode we use. But I also yeah. have a question. You know, like when people talk about reincarnation... How can you get a guarantee that, you know, something or someone is reincarnated as exactly the same species? What if you were a dog and then you reincarnated as a cat or as a person or as a stone? Yeah, it's a going tree? to depend on who, who, what they believe, because there are going to be some people who believe in reincarnation that you can only go from people to people. Hmm. And then there are some who believe that you can turn into a cow the next time. And yeah, there's always like a be reason. A karma. Yeah, I think karma, karmic things and uh, the... Uh, I don't know, the list of your uh, 
all good things that you did even oh, be it's like if you've been a horrible person then you, you're going to be reincarnated as a worm. horrible dog as well mm. right i think <laughs> so it, it it i would like to be a bear it's all counted like to be a bear. <laughs> you eat all year to you know yeah. gain as much fat as you can like, as, you, as you can you, i can do you that you can roar at <laughs> the people and the other creatures that are around you, you sleep through winter i can do that you give birth to your cubs while you sleep so you wake oh. up they're pretty grown i can do that <laughs> oh i'm sorry to burst your bubble but you have the danger of the lumberjacks and the logging and you'll get killed. That's yes, it'll be terrible. <laughs> depends, it depends on where in the wild yeah, you are. Yeah, where. But if you're in like a, some kind of conservation. Some, yeah. They some don't do that in Alaska. They preserve the... I think that like it's illegal to kill bears well, in Alaska. Laws come like... I just heard about a certain law in a certain country, which I'm not going to say which country, because I might be living in that country. <laughs> but um, a of law course. that it has come wink, wink. <laughs> is that it's going to make it easier for trophy hunting. Yeah. So if you're a bear. Yeah, if you're a bear in a certain country, yeah, yeah. you, yeah, it's bad luck for you. Yeah, I want to be a bear in a country where in a nice In a nice yeah. den, yeah. Yeah, Alaska would work. You know, they have a lot of fish, a lot oh. of salmon. They recently had a... You know, like those um, cameras, they kind of, you know, just used to observe the oh, animals. Oh, yes. And, and they recently those. posted a picture from one those. of those cameras. And there, were, there were like seven or eight bears at the same time trying to catch the, uh, you know, oh, salmon. I love those. The trout oh. or something like that. Yeah, I <laughs> know. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. And um, I do not know if that's a thing in, in Brazil or in the US, but in Russia, there's also this... TV show, well, not a TV show, but a reality show about psychics. And I think it's called The Battle of Psychics, where they try to, you know, solve different puzzles or they're given, you know, there are usually like 10 people. And then with every episode, one of them, you know, uh, has to go away. And then, for, for example, they're given a photo and they're like, what happened to the person? And sometimes the person is, you know, all good and healthy, watching all that from the, you know, from the next room. Sometimes it's a dead person. They're like, oh, I see how it happened. And sometimes they're just so wrong. And I used to, <laughs> when I was a kid, just so you know, it's been going off like 15 years already. I thought 10, 15. Right? No. I think oh so. Goodness. I think so. <laughs> really? I mean, I remember watching it when I was like 13, 14. Oh my. So yeah, just doing a simple math over here. <laughs> yeah. So, but there have been like what 20 seasons 15 seasons of that and i used to believe you know all that i used to think like oh wow these are powerful people now i just look at that like yeah. okay let's watch yeah. this fun show okay you know, well, my on tv <laughs> it must be true right <laughs> i was growing up a very naive kid you know <laughs> but yeah and i i just can't understand how come that it's been 15 years of all that and okay, people's high ratings people are watching evidently but why because they love all the you know these just, spooky just things. they want to touch that mysterious yeah uh, but you know that reminds me what about using psychics for detective work have you ever seen shows yes. like that or read articles where th the police would just be at their wits end trying to find this murderer and they bring in a psychic yeah, sometimes, I, sometimes. I, I watch a lot of crime shows and I've oh seen like my. maybe one or two situations. Yeah, I, I'm getting shows already because mm -hmm. it can be true. Mm -hmm. I mean, they can help. Sometimes they don't, but, mm -hmm. but it's possible. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, that's that's what, you know, happens a lot in this uh, reality show that we have here in <laughs> Russia. You know, they have like an unsolved crime and they're like, what do you think happened? They're like, oh, I can see they were killed. <laughs> Some people like, well, especially the relatives, like, yes, yes, yes. It can't have been, you know, it can't have been an incident, like an accident or something like it must have been a murder. Like, uh, Okay. So these are people trying to find people who have been killed or missing. Or just, or just telling them, you know, what happened, you know, before the body was found. Oh, I didn't understand. I didn't get that. I, I thought, I thought you were talking about someone would leave the room and you're asking that also, like, That's really? also one of the tasks oh. at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Some, I think it all starts like the first episode when they need to um, oh. choose some of the people who stay. Like, you know, you have like three boxes and you have to say what's in one of them. And it can be, you know, like an owl, it can be an orange sometimes people are like oh i see something you know something alive and it's just you know a box something, or something something fluffy and, and it's an orange right <laughs> and, and i think it goes like you know it escalates from right. from the, so there are tasks like I that see. too at the beginning okay. there are tasks okay. like with murders there are tasks okay. with 
when am I going to find my love or something? But if like they that. do find the body in the river after the psychic says that, then, then it's true. But how do you know that it's not been, you know, scripted in the scenario and in reality there is no Oh, right. Body. If you're talking about the reality show, but if you're talking yeah, so about a real crime that you actually read in a newspaper or something. Oh, yeah. I haven't, I haven't yeah, ever read about yeah. it. I've heard Such of thing. an experiment that was done a long time ago where you put a person in a room uh, with their eyes covered uh, with something and some dark light. That, and then they would put a person in another room to try to draw what picture they had in their mind and uh, the result was very accurate actually mm. yeah this is is this how uh, what you're talking about earlier in the program about trying to measure it scientifically mm -hmm. so i think scientists have always tried to measure this kind of thing mm -hmm. yeah yes yeah that's their job yeah to try to measure everything <laughs> yeah <laughs> well like with a um some kind of instrument to feel coldness or like in a haunted house oh it's hot over here there's there must be a haunted ghost over here Oh, yeah, you know, sometimes people yeah, also have these things, <laughs> you know, that right. kind of move. I have no, I have no idea how they're called, but yeah. But I saw in in this reality show how people like, yeah, like my my things are telling me right, something right, happened. Right. It's, it's like a magnetic energy uh, being attracted to something. And, and, yeah, right. and, and if it, you're trying to find water, rocks, uh, remember those guys who are looking for water uh, in ah, yes, uh, I've the deserted yeah. uh, yeah, zones, yeah, yeah. right? Uh, just carrying those two. Looking for what? For water. Right, 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 right. The two sticks together. Right, two and they would just get two branches. Yes. It wasn't any contraption. And then they go, here is where we're going to build. Right. We're, we're going to dig our well because we need, because we're pioneers and we need water. How it all works. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just faith I, and belief. Science. Right? I think, right? I'm pretty sure <laughs> science is involved. I watched, the, I watched a film based on real events where uh, the guy that would try to find water this way, uh, he actually, he's in the story, his son, uh, disappeared in some country and uh, he used this technique to try to find his son in this other country uh, or where he was uh, I think maybe murdered or something but yeah and uh, he actually is able to solve the crime but nowadays we have skill. a machine can actually see computer mm -hmm. right <laughs> we, we know where to dig for um, you know some kind of Egyptian tomb or something mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so many things that are yet to be explained or not explained. <laughs> yeah. So what if you, what if you, uh, what if I ask you to give, let's say one um, piece of wisdom or advice to our listeners based on the episode, what would you tell them? Well, my advice is if you're going to go to a psychic, uh, don't give up any information and have that psychic say it all. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you're going to try tarot or uh, maybe astrology, uh, just give it a chance, but uh, think rationally okay. uh, as well. Oh, that's a good one <laughs> as well. Um, definitely don't act impulsively after the reading. <laughs> I, th I think we could have ended with don't act impulsively. Yeah. Uh, caution. <laughs> yeah. All right. And I want to end with, uh, you know, this phrase of Mulder from the X-Files. I want to believe. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, I'm still, I'm still curious. What about, um, about our listeners? Like, what do you guys think? Do you believe in these things or not? Have you had any, you know, spooky experiences, inexplicable things? Share them. Share them in the comment section. I would love to read that. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, ladies. It was a very fun talk. Very spooky and motiv not motivating, but, you know, uplifting maybe in a way, you know, to know that there are so many inexplicable things out there. <laughs> So, and thank you, our listeners, for listening. And remember, if you struggle to understand any part of our conversation, you're always welcome to our website, which is bigappleschool.com slash podcast. You can find full scripts of each episode there so you can read and listen. And that's really, really cool. And if you want to get even more content, which will help you learn English, you can follow us on any social media, such as Instagram, VK, YouTube, Telegram. We are everywhere. Just search our name, which is Big apple school so that was katja and my guests for today were barbara i don't know carol stay tuned and we'll see you around <laughs>